A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Azeki. Ruth Azeki is an American-Canadian novelist. A Tale for the Time Being was published in 2013. Let's see the characters in the novel. Now Yasutani is a 16-year-old Japanese girl who writes of her life in a diary. She has had a difficult life that includes being bullied by her classmates. When her family moves from California to Japan, she contemplates suicide. Ruth is a novelist living on a small island in Canada. She finds Now's diary washed up on the beach on her small island. Ruth becomes obsessed with the lives of Now, her father and her great uncle. Haruki number two is Now's father. He is a computer scientist. He lives with his family in California until he loses his job. Now's mother is the only family member to thrive in Japan. Jaiko is Now's great grandmother. She is a feminist, poet, writer, nun, and mother. Riaiko is Now's nemesis. She is the one who leads the attacks on Now at school. Let's see the summary of the novel. A tale for the time being that tells the story of Ruth, a writer living on a remote island in Canada. One day, she discovers a Hello Kitty lunchbox washed up on the beach, which she believes to be debris from the 2011 tsunami in Japan. Intrigued, she takes the contents of the lunchbox home to investigate. As Ruth delves into the lunchbox's contents, she uncovers the life of Nao, a young Japanese girl. Nao's family had returned to Japan after living in America, and she struggles to adapt to the Japanese culture and schooling system. She is relentlessly bullied by her classmates, who taunt her for not being as intelligent and for her weight which has increased due to her American diet. Now is even placed in a class with younger students because she lacks the necessary education to be in her own age group. The bullying takes a severe toll on Now, leading her to contemplate suicide. Her classmates and even her teacher contribute to her isolation by holding a mock funeral for her, pretending she doesn't exist. Through Now's narrative, the novel explores themes of identity, cultural clashes, and the impact of bullying on an individual's mental well-being. Suicide is a prevalent issue in Japan, with many people choosing to end their lives, often by throwing themselves in front of trains. The government even requires the victim's family to bear the cost of cleanup. Now's father, Feeling like a failure after his unsuccessful time in America, attempts suicide multiple times, as it is considered more honorable than living an unsuccessful life. Ruth, the protagonist living in Canada, develops a deep empathy for Now's family and becomes determined to help them, often forgetting that the events in the diary have already taken place and cannot be changed. For Ruth, as she immerses herself in Now's story, it becomes her present, and she sees their lives as equally important to her own. Ruth uses their story as a way to escape from her own life and responsibilities, finding solace in her connection to Now and wondering about her fate. However, Ruth's husband and friends become concerned about her obsession with Now's story. They observe how she becomes disconnected from her own life and loses track of time. Despite their worries, they are unsure of how to help her. Ruth's husband is also intrigued by Now's story, but reminds Ruth that Now is no longer a young girl and is not experiencing the same anguish as depicted in the diary. He emphasizes that it is Now's past and Ruth cannot alter what has already happened. Ruth's husband, Oliver, tries to remind her that Now's experiences are in the past and that Ruth cannot alter what has already happened. He believes that her interactions with Now's father in her dreams are manifestations of her reading the diary, raising concerns about her mental health. When Ruth finishes reading the diary, she realizes that she lacks closure regarding Now's fate. To find solace, she writes a letter to Now, 
Acknowledging that not knowing allows for the possibility of a happy ending, Ruth wishes the best for now and recognizes that she must focus on her own pursuit of happiness. Themes in the novel, The Theme of Time, A Tale for the Time Being, explores the significance of the present moment and the transient nature of existence, drawing inspiration from Zen Buddhist philosophy. Now, the teenage protagonist who writes a diary reflects on the concept of time being, which emphasizes the impermanence of all things. The novel delves into the character's struggles to accept change and live in the present, focusing on Now and Ruth, the writer who discovers Now's diary and becomes deeply engrossed in it. Now and Ruth find it challenging to let go of their pasts and fully engage with the present. Now, facing difficulties in her life, often reminisces about her happier past, even though she recognizes the impermanence of that happiness and the unreliability of memory. Ruth, burdened by her past and a decade-long memoir project, is unable to embrace the present fully. Both characters are consumed by memories and fail to seize the opportunities the present offers. The novel also highlights the role of change in life. The devastating earthquake and tsunami in Japan serve as a powerful symbol of change, portraying the overwhelming force that disrupts countless lives. However, the Japanese belief in earthquakes caused by a giant catfish represents change as a necessary and transformative force. While change can lead to personal suffering, as experienced by Ruth and Now, it also brings about growth and a deeper appreciation for life's joyful moments and human connections. 2. The theme of life death. Death and the fragility of life are recurring themes in a tale for the time being. The characters, including Now and her father Haruki, grapple with thoughts of death and suicide in a world that appears to be slowly deteriorating. The novel portrays the environmental crisis, with floating plastic trash, animal extinction, and the looming threat of climate change. The media constantly showcases images of death and destruction, such as the 2011 tsunami in Japan, and the 9-11's terrorist attack. Now and Haruki view suicide as a means to gain control over their chaotic lives and the disordered world around them. Now is influenced by the story of her great-uncle Haruki No. 1, a kamikaze pilot in World War II. She mistakenly believes that he embraced his impending death with courage and tranquility. Now yearns to embody his perceived maturity and composure, seeing him as heroic compared to her struggling father. However, Ruth, the reader of Haruki No. 1's secret diary, discovers that he did not willingly embrace death but was forced into it by the circumstances of war. The diary reveals his true feelings of not wanting to die and his love for life, despite the suffering he endured. The novel emphasizes that Now and Haruki's love for life ultimately triumphs over despair. Now contemplates suicide due to the pain in her life and her low self-esteem believing her absence would make no difference. However, her diary entries show her curiosity, observance, and appreciation of the world around her. She finds beauty in nature and is enchanted by the vibrant city of Tokyo. Despite adopting an uninterested demeanor to cope with extreme bullying, she demonstrates academic curiosity when the bullying subsides. It becomes clear that Now is searching for a reason to live, procrastinating on writing about Jaiko's life and focusing more on her own experiences. Similarly, Haruki's suicide attempts imply that he subconsciously wants to fail because he derives joy from various aspects of life. He faces unemployment and a crisis of confidence, feeling worthless and without purpose. However, he engages in various interests, such as studying Western philosophy and creating intricate origami. In a letter to his friend, he explores the Japanese perspective on suicide, 
but it becomes evident that his letter is a plea for help. Haruki, like now, loves living and desires reasons to continue. Jaiko, a Zen Buddhist nun, understands now and Haruki's deep appreciation for life, perhaps more than anyone else. Her love for all creatures and her profound connection with the world amplifies their own love for life. On her deathbed, Jaiko urges now and Haruki to live, emphasizing that despite life's confusion and chaos, it is worth embracing.